Welcome back to Safas Unscripted episode 87. It's only me and Brevan today. Um, but this is this this is the big weekend. URC playoffs, Brevan. We've been speaking about this for a long time. It's the business end. Before we yeah. get into it, people, as always, we do love and appreciate you. So remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Um, Brevan, I mean, before we get into some of the fixtures, what do you say? Yeah, all good, all good. I'm excited for this this weekend. Um, just keen to see how teams get on. Um, keen to see how the picture unfolds for the semi-finals. Obviously, we we would have loved to have Brett here, um, but we think he's obviously still at training or something. Um, he's a missing person. He's we'll a put missing person. Report. Yeah, very busy guy. So he might even join halfway through. We have no idea. Um, difficult yeah. to contact him at the moment. So if you do see him. <laughs> fantastic but anyway please remember guys we we really appreciate you guys please continue to support us like subscribe i mean we're getting to some we're getting close to the international test i mean it's quarter of playoffs now i'm just so keen for some good rugby to be played and yeah i don't know about you but i'm really keen very and i want to hear your opinion okay because i heard some breaking news today and i only just found it out like half an hour maybe an hour ago we're starting off with your team, mm. No Kane and Moody. Or oh, Marku van Staren, two of them. Oh my word, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Surprise Marku attack, van... sneak attack, snuck yeah. up on me. It's, it's also, I, was, I saw it like a X or tweet or whatever people call it these days. Obviously, we know it's X, whatever. Um, but I saw someone say, it's going to be a shame not to see Kane and play this weekend. And I was like, what? What's this about? And then a couple minutes later i saw the news breaking that um he's injured and marco van staden is sick and so he's ill and he'll miss the game so that's disappointing um i hope kanan's injury isn't too bad i don't know the severity of the injury um but Do you know what I the injury he, is i, I, I have no idea i have no idea so yeah it's a bit scary because obviously i think we can get away with it against benetton i think that will be okay um it's just when we most likely face a Leinster the following week, you know, then you kind of want your full strength, every best player you can possibly play. So, yeah, it's it's not great news, but um, you know, I think we can do it without him at, at, at in this quarterfinal. As, as you just said, like you should still be getting it done. But the thing is, Benetton had such a such a solid performance against Edinburgh. Like, surely, at least a bit to some degree. You are panicking about this, guy, oh, yeah, especially when, course. especially when it comes to the second halves. We've we've spoke about this, and we saw it this weekend again. I I, I didn't think the scoreline was a fair reflection necessarily of the game. I think the Sharks did brilliantly in the second half. Had you defending for your lives, which is obviously a compliment to you for not conceding the points, but the drop off is absolutely insane. And look at what Benetton did in the second half to Edinburgh, because after the first half, the score was pretty much the same, right? And then in the second half. Brex turned up, those brothers, um, they were insane. Like, we we saw what Benetton did against the Bulls literally a couple of weeks ago. I know they got smashed, but in the second half, once again, they came back a, a, a bit. Now, surely this worries you for this game. And if not this game, definitely for that Leinster game, if they were to proceed as well. Yeah, yeah, I know. I can't say I'm sitting here 100% confident. I mean, obviously, I believe in the guys and I think we should still have enough. But, you know, like you said, Benetton have been a very good second half side and we have been a very bad second half side. So, if Benetton keep it to a point where it's pretty tight in the first half, we're going to have to really work on some on fixing what we do in the second half because, obviously, it's just... it's. We have, obviously, players like Devin Williams, um, Sebastian de Klerk to come in for Kanan. Or alternatively, they'll make changes elsewhere and, and move players around. But it is worrying to, to not have two great players in Marco van Staden and, and Kanan Moody. And like you said, against Leinster, you, would, you, you really would like those players to be playing. So mm. I really hope these injuries or this injury for Kanan isn't too bad and um, I'm sure Marku will be fine for the semi-final if we do proceed. But beat, stop beating around the bush. I still think we'll win this game. Um, I think we will win it by, I'm going to say 15 <laughs> points. Bless you. Um, I'm going to say we're going to win this points. one. 
No, 15. I think we'll win it by 15. Yeah, so yeah. I, I think it's it should be comfortable, even though we don't have those two players. But um, I am wary that Benetton are a good side in the second yeah. half, especially. Listen, you're still playing at Loftus. The, the crowd will be alive. They will be ready for, for, for Benetton, the boys. Um, I don't think the injuries will impact you too much, necessarily. I think you guys know you can't write off Benetton. The guys will still go out there um, and give it their all. Um, and and we can't use uh, an injury and, a, and an illness as an excuse, right? Yeah. Because we, we, all, we literally said it a couple of weeks ago, where it's like, you play your strongest team. Injuries will happen. Whatever happens, that's part of the game. You have to adapt with it. And that's where squad depth kind of comes into play. Now, Cannon Moody, I don't think that is the biggest loss necessarily because I do think Sebastian de Klerk has been good. Um, even Marco van Staden, like your Lucy's has been... Uh, I mean, there's good. still Marcel could see who will probably come in. So it's, it's not a massive... It is a loss, but the players that will yeah. come in are more than capable to do the job, I'm sure. The, the worrying point is still... Probably just the bench. So yeah. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's the depth. Is that's not good only, bench. You can only fix that next season. You yeah. have to get in a couple of signings. You don't don't focus on the big signings when it comes to first team players. Just get some solid replacements on the bench. Anyway, yeah, sure. that's it for the Bulls. I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna go with you because I think there will be a big first off performance by the Bulls. I think they'll have the lead in the first off by almost twenty points. And then mm. kind of drop off. They'll lose the second half, but win the game by, let's say, 13 points. I think that would be a fair shout. Um, mm. It's just the physicality. Like, yeah. you know, it was very physical against Edinburgh, but when you go up against the Bulls at Loftus, it's it's a different ball game. It's totally yeah. different. The Bulls know how to do it. They need to do it. And to be fair, I want to see the Bulls take on Leinster at Loftus. So oh, um, I'll actually be rooting for the Bulls on this one. <laughs> Next up, go to the Stormers. Now, I haven't seen any team news on this one, but we're traveling. We're yeah, traveling. It's, it's, it's a tough one. Um, I really want to back you guys, but like I'm so nervous in what, what, what gets produced on the day. Um, obviously, I think on paper, the Stormers have the more talented side, but like you said, it's just the traveling is just... I mean, it's not just the Stormers. I feel like the Bulls as well, Sharks, Lions. It's just traveling to Europe is not is not our thing. I mean, and that's yeah. no excuse, we but we do struggle. Um, so Especially when it comes to the artificial pitches as well. Like, we have not got a hang of that just yet. And, yeah. and, and, and it shows in our record. Like, I'm not using it as an excuse, but more as a reason. Like, we do get spanked. We, we do not travel well. And that absolutely makes me – it gives me the shits. <laughs> Yeah, people. Um, the reason I'm sniffing is I'm I'm a bit cold. Okay, yeah, I've got I mean, I've got a bit of the cold. These would <laughs> I was, I'm recovering from a cold, so yeah, that's why we both maybe sound a bit ill. But I think the Bulls managed to. There's something about South African teams. We don't travel well, 100. percent But when it comes to a, a game that means something, you know, there's something on the line. And you guys just went and you travelled now. And you won both your, your traveling games, even though they weren't maybe convincing wins or, or whatever you would say. You still went yeah. over there and, and got the job done because they were games that meant something. You know, it, it meant something to the log. And especially in like a playoff game. I've, I mean, we saw the Bulls travel to Leinster um, two seasons ago and win there in Ireland. Um, I mean, that was massive, massive performance. And I'm, I feel like the, state, the, the Stormers have the same characteristics in them to go out there and win against Glasgow. Um, we've seen Glasgow yeah, the, maybe. The thing on, yeah. on our side is kind of like we know how to win in the big games in the past couple of seasons. Like we know when it matters, we get the points. Even if we scrape over the line, it could be the ugliest game. Obviously, we are also injury fueled, um, but we still need to go out there and do the job. And what also scares me a bit is Glasgow has not been on form. And yeah. they might just want to pick up form for this game in front of their home crowd. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, I can see us beating them physically and I can see see us beating them with flair. Yet I can't really see us beating them just because of all the no, other I get it. foodies over us. Always uh, back your team. Listen, listen. If I had to be my true self, I'd say, listen, we, we're absolutely going to spank them. Like, we are going to thrash them. But that's not the 
true reflection of what's going on in my brain at the moment. Like yeah. I am, at, I'm more nervous for this game than I would have probably been to face the prime Leinster or prime Bulls or prime Munster in Cape Town. Yeah. Like it's just because we're on the road, yeah. which is nerve wracking. But but the boys know they have to put up their hand. They haven't been really at the races, but we've kind of been getting those victories where it's like you're not playing well, but the good teams find a way to win when you're not playing well. Like Connor was an average game. I think we played better than a scoreline. We dominated for large parts. But the real issue in the Stormers team, in my opinion, is that we're not clinical enough. For the Bulls, it's the second half performances. But for us, it's 22 entries and we're going out with no points. We saw it against the Lions as well. Another one, silly, silly mistakes leading to tries. Like mistake on mistake on mistake. We saw it against the Dragons, I think twice. We saw it against the Lions. We just let in soft tries. And that annoys the piss out of me, especially when every every single point matters against, well, in the playoffs. Yeah, and and obviously, Angelo Davids is suspended, if I'm correct, for that red card. I don't know what the back yeah. is, but who, who would you play in in your back line obviously forwards we kind of have know what's going to happen i think i think it's i think it's pretty easy i go six two split on the bench um if we're gonna really have to if we really want the upper hand in this game we need our forwards on the bench um i think that's where we have a bit of a bit of a what do you call it advantage over them so i'm going six two split i'm putting ben loader on the wing instead of um obviously angelo david's gone now um and then i'll have Stefan Ungerer on the bench and John Luke Duplessis, because Duplessis okay. can switch, can fill in fly off. He's been playing inside center, and then I'm sure he can fill in that fullback as well. But whoever gets injured, let's whatever. What if Kalanti's back as well? To be fair, mm. so now I'm thinking maybe Sasha drops onto the bench as player 23, no. and then Wadi no. goes into 15 because Wadi has been good, and then mm. Ben Lotus still on the wing. Uh, I'm not too sure. We could m- possibly see. Warik Halant on the wing and Sasha on the on the fullback position. Yeah, I, don't, I don't see Halant working on the wing. So you, I think maybe your best option is starting Halant and having Sasha on the bench, or you bring Halant on and you start Sasha. It, it all depends on how what what Dabo feels yeah, is right. If Halant plays, he's probably got to start. Like Sasha would be more of an impact player than than Warik. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a five three split with Ungerer. Ben Loder and Sasha as the what's it bench because Ben Loder is just a, is is a workhorse like for a, yeah. for for a backline player so he can be on the bench and whatever. Well, he won't be because we need a wing. <laughs> All yeah. our wings are either dead or injured. So <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's a tough one. It, um, it's a tough yeah. one, but I, I'd go six to you, in my opinion. That's what I would go. I think this is a close game. Obviously, back your team. I'm going Stormers by four points. Ugly game. Like, proper mm. ugly with both teams conceding soft tries because Glasgow's defense, to say it nicely, is fucking shit. So, <laughs> that's just my opinion on it. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to support the Stormers in this game. I do want to see them make it through. Um, however, it's just... I don't know. I just feel like you guys have a lot of injuries against you. There's a lot of players that are just, I don't know. It's just a lot of injuries, a suspension. Um, I don't know. So I, I do think Glasgow is going to win this one, unfortunately. I don't think it's unfair to say that. Obviously, no, not you guys at all. are traveling. I mean, if it were the Bulls, if the Stormers that, win and the Bulls win, we are most likely seeing uh, all Irish versus South African semi finals. Yeah. And there's a high likelihood that we'll yeah. see a South Africa versus Ireland final once again. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then obviously we're going into the series. So back the Stormers on this one. It's a, it's a lovely little storyline. This is a lot of bragging rights going into this. Because yeah. imagine this. We're hyping up Ireland and South Africa. And you heard a stupid South African team fell out against a Scottish team. Are you being serious? <laughs> the only reason yeah, that's I... that eye is because they're playing Benetton twice, they're playing Zebra twice. Okay, I don't want to hear any shit. They're playing <laughs> Edinburgh twice. I yeah. mean, please calm down. So yeah, you know what? Okay, so I think with my heart, I'll go Stormers by five. With my head, I'll say Glasgow by five. I think. Yeah, that's just remember to do your Super Bowl as well. 
Yeah, yeah, I must remember to do it, lad. Yeah, because if you miss this Friday, <laughs> you must even caught half the games. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which would be ridiculous. For you. I, I, anyway, yeah, let's go, let's go on to the Irish teams, and obviously this is actually the first game of the weekend. We've got Munster versus Ospreys. Um, oh my word! What's Munster's field name? I can't even remember. Oh, I don't. It's literally yeah, slipped my tongue. Sorry. I don't even know why I brought it up because now we look stupid. <laughs> now we look like it is what it is. I mean, I'll take it. People probably all, already think I'm a stupid one out here. Um, Munster to smash our sprees. You agree? Yeah, I think Munster are just looking like a different oiled machine at the moment. Um, I, I, can you believe it really can take some form from the past couple of games into, into this one and possibly? make life a bit tough because obviously yeah. Munster looked beatable against Ulster mm -hmm. now credit to Ulster for a great performance but Ospreys are also one of those teams that can make that that look very tough to beat every now and again when they make it tight they make it ugly make it a bit scrappy they kick the ball just put you under a bit of pressure they can come out of out mm -hmm. of a game with something they I mean, at, the end of at, New oh, at Cape Town at the end of the day it is a quarter final you know so you know, it is a playoff game. Nothing will be, everything will be left out there. Um, but at the end of the day, I think Ospreys can bring their best. And I still think Munster will have enough. It's just, they're so well oiled and they just so, I mean, we started off the season by saying um, that this could be the worst URC defense we've ever seen by Munster because they were looking horrific in the beginning of the season. Yeah, yeah. And they've turned it around and they've topped the log and are now probably going to get a home final. Um, if it, uh, That's a very high probability. Yeah, It's just cr agree. crazy how they've turned it around. So, you know what, I think as much as Ospreys can bring, I still think Munster will match it even at... 85 percent of their best yeah so the thing yeah. is like we we spoke about that and it didn't feel harsh it felt valid when we made the opinion because i think they were they were way down and they weren't mm -hmm. playing good rugby and even if they topped the log with some scrappy scrappy wins or whatever you could still say um yeah well it's still an iffy um what's a defense but the way that they've played, we've given so much credit to Munster in terms of the way that they've played. It's been clinical. It's been mature. Um, but saying that, Ospreys, I wouldn't be surprised. They they, they aren't a bad team. But yeah. saying that, I'm going Munster by 26 points. I think they absolutely <laughs> bash them. I, yeah. I think they absolutely shit on them. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say Munster by 20. Um, just... They they too good. I mean, they said they yeah. just on they just a better side. Like in every yeah, aspect, forwards are better. so dominant. That, yeah. you know, it's going to be a mature clinical performance in front of your own home crowd, and even if Ospreys want to make this game tight, Munster also likes making a game tight. Like they're mm -hmm. not your most free flowing rugby team, to be fair. Yeah, and, so and you know, I think it play this this game plays perfectly into Munster's mm -hmm. hands. I'm going Munster. I'm I'm dropping it down from 26. That was a bit ridiculous. I'm going 22 points. But, yeah. yeah. Look, Munster I think we all we all thought oh, like oof, Ulster kind of made it tight, and you know, I mean, but at the end of the day, that was an Irish derby. You know, you know those those Irish derbies are always tight. Yeah. So they always the form goes out of the window in a derby. Exactly, yeah. and then I think just we also saw. Munster were down majority of the game or losing majority of the game and they found a way to win. So even if yeah. Ospreys want to make it tight and make it close, I still think Munster will find a way to win because they're just yeah, that good. They're, so, they're just too yeah. good to, to put it plain and simple. Now, I know we spoke about Bulls, Benetton, Munster, Stormers. This is the game that I'm most excited for. And, and I feel horrible that I can't watch it. Obviously, I'm on a plane. Okay, This game starts right before I take off. Because I won't even be watching it. Leinster, Ulster. Now, obviously, the easy choice would be Leinster. But there's a bit of a woozy doozy out there. <laughs> Ulster, Ulster's got two over them this season. Now, this hasn't been Leinster's strongest team. Can the lack of playtime together bite them in the ass? It, I think it can. Um, but at the same time... I don't know. It, it's it's a, it's a weird one because you know what? I feel like Leinster has this kind of system where 
that that team, obviously their their A side, if we can put it, obviously they play together all the time. You'll never find a way when, for for example, where Joe McCarthy has to have a different lock partner every week, or he, he has his lock partner and they'll train together, and then the B the B side will have their set team, and then the yeah. C side will have their set team. So. I still think there will be some... Co- I mean, look, we, I, I won't take anything away from Leinster in, in the way they performed in the Champions Cup final. They just ran out of gas in the in extra time, and, and that's part of rugby. I mean, for goodness sake, they, they went up against Toulouse for 80 minutes and drew the game. So, it's it's... I still think Leinster will be more than good enough. I don't... There might be a bit of if he kind of play in the first 20, maybe trying to find their feet. But once they find their feet, I just think Leinster are on like a, we say this about Munster and we'll, and I'll say it about Leinster. I just think they are too good. Um, yeah. But at the same time, Ulster are a side that regardless of who you put in front of them, they will make it tight. And, and that's the, that's what they want to do. And they went up against Munster's full strength side, which are a very, very good side. And they made it very tight until the end. So they deserve to win that game. Like they, yeah. they were the better team. Obviously, it's the same old thing. Munster, the good teams find a way to win, right? Even when you're not playing well. Um, I just think like Ulster will have some confidence after, yeah, of course, in the season. Like if they had to choose between going up against Munster or Leinster. I think that the monster hurt, ach, the monster loss hurts a bit more. Like even though Leinster is probably a better team than than Munster, they'd rather play Leinster because they know how to do it. Now they are yeah. better guys, but the system is probably still the same. Mm. You get what I mean? So, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. And and in Ulster's mind, they'll probably think if we just play our game plan, we can do it again. But I'm go- I'm going Leinster to to win this game by nine. Um, mm-hmm. is it at the Aviva? I think it might yeah. be at the Aviva now. I think it's at the yeah. Aviva, yeah. And that's, I mean, it's an Irish yeah. quarter final. Um, it's gonna be tight, but at the end of the day, I just think there's a lot of hurt in that Leinster camp. I think there was a lot of self reflection that was done. I mean, losing three finals in a row, and yeah. then obviously a semi final, um, twice in a row in the URC. It, it it does it does hurt, um, and that, that's not to ban to them or anything, but it, it will hurt them. And I, I, yeah, I see, they might I see come us, out and look like the most scary team on planet Earth. I mean, that's, that's that's my thought between, because yeah. the, I, I truly think the bunch of professionals they have on that side um, will will, will self reflect and they will think like, guys, we may have not have won the Champions Cup, but we can go out there and win the URC. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I think Leinster have this in the bag. I'm actually going to say they'll win in double digits. I think they'll win by 11 points, 11, 12 points, um, just because Leinster are a very, very good side. I you do know, see it being we, tight. We saw what Leinster did to, to Connacht, right? And that was mm-hmm. just a controlled performance. They didn't try anything extravagant. It's not like they tried to run the ball out of their own 22 or, or whatever. Like, it was just a, a very clinical and matured performance. And that that... That alone should get them the job done normally against Ulster. The only thing that kind of makes us makes this a bit of a debate is just the history between the two teams. Mm-hmm. But as soon as they if they win this game, like no one no one cares about Ulster beating them twice in the lead up to this game. So um I'm going Leinster by nine. It's not gonna be less than nine. I think it's more than nine actually, but I'm just gonna keep it there. I think it's gonna be a very good performance by Leinster. They'll, they'll shut up the doubters, maybe. <coughs> um, but the, it is what it is. You have anything else to add to to this little quarter final episode of us? I just think what I'm really hoping for is just to see Bulls play Leinster in the semi final at Loftus. What happens after that happens, and I really want to see Munster versus Stormers in the other semi final because, like you said, that builds up so nicely to to that series that comes in July. so um, And we'll I, never hear the end. If that's the semifinals and the final is Munster and Leinster. <laughs> I mean, then we have to win in July. Then I'm, like, go, I'm, go, I'm going on a sabbatical. I know, I know. <laughs> listen, this, this video is coming out now, what, tomorrow morning, Friday morning. 
I won't be here on, on Monday morning. If we lost, it's not because I'm scared of the people. It's because I'm on a plane. But I'm also scared of the people. So don't give me <laughs> wrong. That's not, <laughs> that's not the reason. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, everyone, everyone, for watching. Please do remember to like and subscribe. We appreciate each and every one of you guys. And we will see you next week, Monday. Thank you. Cheers. Yes.